All right, I think I've waited a little too long, but we are live. Welcome to Tavern Talk. Uh, I'm the Anarchist. Um, next to me, to my right, your right, Anna Moore. Stage right. Stage right. And right below me, we have our guest filling in for Slimpch, who uh, has made it. Has has made one more lap around the sun. He, he's another year older. Um, Tom Lock oh, subbing in for Slimpch. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, uh, how is everybody doing today? Do we have any uh, any exciting um, anything exciting going on going on in your all's Hearthstone worlds? Yeah, I got we got one word for you, and that's that's popper, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's uh, so, an exciting format. Yeah, this Saturday, the uh, Blizzard in typical Blizzard fashion, uh, earlier in August, actually August 11th, announced that they would be having a tavern versus tavern tournament, and just last week they announced the format, which was popper standard. Uh, so we're preparing three popper decks. Uh, you can have rares. It's different than Magic's popper, where you can only have commons. Um, okay. Okay. It's we have been pretty much thinking about that nonstop since uh, last Thursday. So. <laughs> Uh, building popper deck sounds like a unique experience. Um, did any of y'all get the chance to play in the Wicked Wednesday yesterday? We played one round. <laughs> yeah, we each played one round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so did so did that make you rethink your decks a little bit, or? Well, we we had to drop early. We made a commitment, and uh, there were some time zone complications. Gotcha. But, uh, okay. We had the opportunity to scrim against uh, another team. And DHL that was playing popper as well, so we uh, we didn't want to waste their time. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so uh, in other Hearthstone news, cards are getting nerfed. Um, yeah, they are. Lots of uh, lots of people talking about the nerfs. Um, I know a lot of our Q and A section is. Um, I think I picked a couple questions about what we'll be doing about some like specific questions, but. Ben Brode spoke, and um, Druids getting nerfed, uh, Warriors getting nerfed. Uh, what do you guys think? Those are the big ones that stand out to me, but what do you guys think about these nerfs? How are they handled? Do you like them? What do you think? Tim, give me your thoughts, man. Um, personally, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I know... There's a lot. Some of the changes I disagree with. Like I disagree with how they should have handled Innervate. Um Reprinting counterfeit coin in that way just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I, I think they should have stuck with the flavor of refreshing mana crystals. Uh, but honestly, I'm mostly just excited for the way that uh, the game is going to change. I'm excited to see what's going to be different because, uh, like a lot of you, I'm tired of the same old Hearthstone after weeks and weeks in a row. I love when they shake it up. It's good to see different decks come around. Yeah. Tom, what do you think about them? I love all changes to Hearthstone. Um, however, uh, there was something that made me very, very sad about this announcement, which is they really highlighted that they're not going to be moving to a real standard format. They're going to be keeping classic and basic cards as part of standard. And uh, that's a real, real big bummer to me. Um, I think Hearthstone ha really struggles with adding new mechanics, and I part of the reason for that is the UI. I, I agree with um, Reynard when he says that. But another big, big reason for that is that they have a core set of cards that uh, they're not getting rid of. Uh, and with this is something that also. Uh, Value Town talked about the. Uh, I've seen other folks in the community talk about is class identity is becoming less and less unique, and with the Intervein and Fiery War exchanges, I really agree with that. And I I think if you're going to rely on basic cards for the class identity, then you're going to continue to have those struggles any time that you change a basic card, and you're gonna have to keep changing. 
Yeah, it, it does seem like basic cards are always going to be the ones that, uh, they tend to get that, um, they're always there. Um, everyone feels like, oh, I'm always playing against Fire War Axe, I'm always playing against Fireball and Frostbolt, and, um, you know, they are always going to be there, so they're always going to be sort of the, the target of nerfs, it feels like. So let's go through these, let's talk about them a little bit more in depth. Innervate used to be gain two mana crystals this turn only. It's now gain one mana crystal this turn only. Essentially a counterfeit coin. Um, what do you guys think about inter the Innervate changes? Yeah, I kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, giving Rogue and Druid the exact same card with different art and, uh, and a different name uh, just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I think they were trying to keep it similar, so maybe um, people didn't feel cheated that the card was totally different. Like, oh, Druid got a new card. It's it's not Innervate, but it's it's weaker than Innervate. Uh, I don't know. I just don't think it works. Yeah, I feel I, I really don't like the um, this being a identical reading card to Counter Bitcoin. Um, I really wish they could have left it at a uh, left it at the number two, but refresh spent mana crystals. I think that would have been nice. Um, Tom Locke, what are your thoughts on Innervate changes? Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan. Uh, I think that this makes this card unplayable, and as often as we can make basic cards unplayable, thumbs up. <laughs> I see I see a common theme here. Now, Fiery War Axe, um, no one really expected this card to get nerfed, but it's now three mana, up from two, and um, what do you guys think about it? Um, what do you guys think about this change to Fiery War Axe? You want to go first, Tom Lock? Remember what I said before? Yeah, <laughs> oh, so. yeah um, I don't know. It's been such it's been such a huge part of the Warrior class for so long. Easily the strongest card in the class, if not the strongest card in the game. Um, it's it's weird to see it fall out of favor like this. I I can't really predict what's going to change. I think uh, what it did was it stole tempo early and also held it, and that's not a unique opinion. Uh, but stealing tempo early and, and holding it was uh, at odds with the other, the other side of Warrior, the taunting and, and charging side of Warrior. Yeah, the the biggest complaint I have right now with um, Fiery Winax being no longer Fiery Winax, um, I really dislike the reasoning. Um, in one of, one of the quotes, um, it says, Generally changing the mana cost of a card is less disruptive because you can always see the mana cost of cards in your hand. And it, it just seems like, man, we're... Hearthstone really isn't for us sometimes. I feel like we expect Hearthstone to be for the type of people who would join a Team Hearth League, you know. But uh, when I see things like that come up, I'm like, really? Like, uh, we can't read other numbers on the card? Like, <laughs> we, we can't be expected to pay attention? Um, the other... The other thing about with the Fiery War Axe nerf is it just seems so... All these nerfs really are so uncreative. Um, like, why, why just change mana crystals, change numbers? Like, you could do... I've seen some really cool ideas that I knew would never happen because Blizzard doesn't want to add text, change text. Uh, we just want to change numbers, and that's how we like to change things. And... I don't know. It just seems like they're just wasting the opportunity in some of these balance changes. Like, make it where it can only attack minions of the turn it's played. Like, there's so many cool things you can do with um, a lot of these cards. Um, yeah. You know, one of the ways that you can do this that they've done in other card games 
is when a newer set comes up. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, rotation. I, I really strongly agree with you. Uh, if you want... Uh, having complicated cards is something that can that is a problem but that is it is not it is not a problem in this case you know if you made yeah. innervate <laughs> if it's your first turn of the game adds add one mana crystal if it's your second turn add one etc if you had a diff bunch of different modes or same with fiery war X, like if you played it on your first or second turn it only had one durability or something like that i do think that would be too complicated but i definitely i definitely agree with you on yeah you can totally change other members. um something that that i i saw as an idea as well was instead of they do a, i do think they do do a very good job of making folks aware of nerfs um when you i mean when you load up the app and all that they have a really good graphic but if they had instead a tutorial for nerfs where they suggested replacements or even you know had the innkeeper give you a little spiel about why they banned it or maybe ben brode's voice or something like that i think that would be a big that would go a long way towards keeping the kind of player who just logs in once a week or just does their dailies um spending money when a new set comes out Definitely Ben Brode's laugh. That'll get their attention. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, there's so much they can do, and right now I think uh, a lot of the Hearthstone community just kind of feels like they're doing, they just do too little. Um, and I think Fiery War X is a really good example of it, especially with their answers. Yeah, we definitely, definitely need a Ben Brode rap about nerfs. Honestly, <laughs> like, yeah, I would never complain about nerfs. All right, so what do you think about Hex? Three to four mana. I per whatever like it's still really powerful it's on par with polymorph now it was always a really powerful shaman card um do, do, do we does this affect shaman that much nah. no not in its current state i think yeah. um they're trying to improve their design space for the future obviously at, at least it's obvious to me that they've got something in mind uh up and coming for shaman um and they kind of want to get this change out of the way now Yep. They're going to have maybe a more tempo-oriented shaman. That's that's what I would think. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Um, because changing mana costs of removal really only affects tempo. So. Murloc War Leader. What do you guys... Do, do you have any strong feelings about the changes to Murloc War, War Leader? Uh, knocking off the health buff and just making it an attack buff? Um... I'm a little sad that I'm not going to see Brandon mess up a quality anymore. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, I am very, very sad that this makes control decks better. You know, that's, we, they they should have just added 30 health. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. That's only a reasonable change. Murlocs are, are kind of boring at this at this point. So... Yeah, we've seen Murlocs for a, a good chunk now. Um, I'm cool with them uh, kind of lowering the power on them, but not to the point of, like, it's not your other charged Murlocs have plus one attack, so I'm okay with it. Um, so, yeah, that change doesn't bother me too much. Um, now, Spreading Plague, which, like I said last week, Spreading Plague was the best card in Druid. And P and someone in chat's going to try and say it was a one of. Ben Bro just confirmed it was one of the best perf it was the current it was since it was currently the top performing card in Jade and Taunt Druid decks. The card is ridiculous. It went from 5 mana to 6 mana. Does that change your thoughts on the power level of this card? What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, uh, in conjunction with the, the changes to Innervate, um, Spreading Plague is going to come out maybe uh, a turn and a half later. Um, and I think I think that's a big deal. Um, they obviously thought about changing it to 7 mana, uh, but they, uh, they decided against it. And I kind of trust them on that. Coming out at 7 mana, it'll be good. It would probably still be played. But um, that one extra turn where people have enough minions on the board and you wish you had one more mana to play... Uh, Spreading plague—that's going to make a difference in a lot of druid matchups. 
yeah uh obviously it's worse uh i hope that it's worse enough <laughs> yeah I, I think it's gonna be a really it's still be a really strong call card and a really key tool for druid to be able to fight off that aggression from like these minion decks like murlocs um to put out a lot of minions but um i think i think the biggest thing right now is it competes with um in jade druid particularly it competes with jade behemoth um so it slows their jade count a little too which a lot of times that's their way to get back is get up a decent sized board to where behind some taunts and some um, some stuff to where they can take over from the aggro decks. It's going to be a little bit harder now because um, you're going to be having to play this on six and you're not going to be developing your jades on six like you want to. Um, so I think that's going to be a pretty big change. Um, the last thing I want to bring up about these nerfs is they mentioned a couple of cards. Um, Mostly because the community was ranting and raving about them. Uh, Ultimate Infestation and Ice Block. Um, they didn't touch Ultimate Infestation. Um, and they also did not move Ice Block to the Hall of Fame as mentioned. Um, they kind of sort of said that um, Hall of Fame, moving stuff to the Hall of Fame is exclusive to New Year. Um, like the new set of uh, the new Hearthstone year as it said um, so they hinted that they would be moving that um, I think it spawns from other people's discussions of moving uh, Icebox Hall of Fame so what do you guys think about not changing Ultimate Infestation and um, bringing up Icebox and saying like hey we're paying attention to this but we're not touching it Super dumb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, you make the rules. There's not, you know, you, you make the rules. This, it's your game. People aren't gonna, aren't, are people are gonna complain about nerfs and changes. Uh, why not rip off the bandaid all at once? Yeah, the Pentagon's not gonna call you up and say, uh, you changed the rules in the game that you make. <laughs> They're not gonna find you. Um, I mean, I personally think I, I kind of agree with it. I like when they rotate a whole bunch of cards out at once. Um, I think these changes might be enough. I know a lot of people hate Ice Block, um, especially smart players like Tom Lock, but uh, I think it's fine. Um, I think the Ultimate Infestation is probably. I mean, we're we're gonna have to wait and see uh, if the nerf to Spreading Plague and Innervate is gonna be enough. Um, I personally think it it will be. Um, you gotta fight your way sometimes through 10 to 30 health and spreading plague at, on turn 5 in order to even get to the ultimate infestation turns. Um, if that comes out a turn later, you know, maybe maybe it won't even happen. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm not too disappointed that they didn't nerf ultimate infestation. Um, I already stupidly disenchanted my golden one before they announced this but i did notice this seems very cheap they only nerfed two cars that you're getting dust back for <laughs> um yeah but my bit i don't have a problem with ice block right now um i have a problem with discovering three or four or five or six ice blocks um so i want to see the card go because of so many times i've had to pop four or five blocks in a single game uh, Primordial Glyph, um, Kabbalah's Tomes, Babbling Books. The list goes on and on in ways Mage can get more ice blocks. Um, so, and then Archaeologists, they always have it, but um, I don't know. Uh, I'm, it seems like Mage has been relying on that card for a good portion of uh, the past few metas. Um, Freeze Mage has always been around. Um, then they came out with the OTK, and they're, I don't know. And now we've got the, uh, the new and improved OTK, so, I don't know. I'm ready for that card to change, but, um, I don't know when or if we'll get that. So, we'll see. Y'all can guess how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just tired of playing against Ice Block. Um, 
it 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 was cool for a long time and now I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. You think that um, you might get sick of playing against particular hero powers in the same way, but I haven't I haven't felt that at all. So I wonder what what the difference kind of is there. Is it just having to see the artwork or <laughs> that is that? <laughs> yeah. Nobody yells at uh well, I guess people yell at life tap, but no one yells at uh, the one ones from Paladin. No one really yells at the one damage from uh, from Mage. Yeah, I mean, I I know people used to talk about the Hunter hero power as the most powerful hero power in the game, um, but I they never it never seemed like people were just like, oh, I'm just so sick of it. Like it's it's a good it's a good hero power, but I'm just sick. Of it. All right. Yeah, I don't... hero powers are a talk for another day. <laughs> yeah, Let's... dude, I could talk about hero powers forever. <laughs> Let's move on to some THL talk. The week that was, um, we're gonna cover up the cover the uh, the matchups that we we highlighted last week. And first up, uh, Aeon played Thermic Quims. And man, was it a doozy. 15 to 14. Aeon sneaks out the win by a single point. Um, what do you guys think of this matchup? Do you think this matchup says more about Aeon or more about the Thermic Whims? Um, Tim, what do you think? Um, I just want to point out that uh, out of, what, 25 possible total games... Uh, 24 games was played, so four out of the of the five sets went to five games, and one of them went to four games. So, uh, really well fought from both teams, and of course that's reflected in in the score. Um, I I was kind of prepared for for Aeon to have a much more decisive victory, or Eon, as uh, as Durden said in the, in the town hall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, that didn't happen. It was a lot closer than we thought, and. Um, Despite despite losing, Thermic Wims, Wims had a really impressive uh, first week. Yeah, I tend to think that um, I'm, I'm really impressed with Thermic Wims. Um, they had Lemur subbing in, got two points. Um, I look at Ryzen and Rankaloid. Um, they're fighting two really solid four and five seeds and got two wins there. Um, and then... Dwayna and D. Lyman weren't able to get the win, but they were able to get three points between them, and that turns out to be enough to win. Hockey Boys beat Lamer. Not necessarily a shocker there. I love you, Lamer. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I thought it was a really, really exciting series. I'm glad um, Thermoquims uh, put up a really good fight. And as a new team to come that close, I think it says a lot about... Um, what the Thermic Whims can do um, this season. Tom Locke, you got any thoughts on this one? Yeah. Uh, Aeon is one of the best teams in Hearthstone and winning games against... Sorry, one of the best teams in THL. One of the best teams in Hearthstone. All the teams in THL are some of the best teams in Hearthstone. Um, and winning any amount of games against the you know the most ex one of the most experienced teams in THL is is impressive. Yeah, I I really just want to point out for a second that uh this series was or uh yeah, this this matchup was so close. Uh Rankaloid that we had nine druid bans and Rankaloid actually banned warrior against Follow Dirt. Um so you got to it's got to stick in your mind how this would have changed if he would have banned druid. Uh, obviously we don't know what strategy he was going for. Um but that really sticks out. Speaking of banning Druid, um, I didn't check what um, Team Golden Whist banned, but uh, Defias banned a lot of Druid, but still came up really, really short. Um, <laughs> in a, I think it was 18 to 8 is what the final score was. Um, Team Golden Wisp is back, and they're looking as dominant as they were last season. Um, yeah, and look at all the surprise on our faces. <laughs> so, are they going to keep it up? Do, do we expect them to be as dominant last season, or this season, as they were last season? Yeah, not much has changed. Uh, their new two seed, uh, as I predicted, is going to be just as strong as the, 
his predecessor. And um, Team Golden Wisp, always strong, uh, continue to be strong as not much has changed. Yeah. Yeah, when you uh, when you can keep that many players, it, that's great. Yeah, um, I, I, I know last week we said we were a little concerned with Asuna in the four seed. You know, sometimes she gets there and crushes them, and sometimes she struggles because um, I think she did end up in the five seed last season. She goes out there and sweeps Arcane, and that's a, that's a really solid win. Um, if she can keep that up, I really think she's going to be one of the key members um, to their success. The more success she has, the more success Team Golden Wisp is going to have. And I think it's going to really matter coming, you know, coming into the playoffs and stuff. I think she's going to be a real key piece. Yeah, I got to agree with that. I think uh, the one-two punch and the one-and-two seed from Golden Wisp is really strong. And uh, the bottom half of their lineup really follows up incredibly well. When, uh, when you can watch that four or five C just jump a hundred PR over a season, I, that's that's awesome. So, I I I predict a huge huge gains in PR for Arsenal. She definitely set up to do it. Um, and then on the flip side, can Defies compete in the in the black? Di- well, they're not in the black division. I don't think I'd, I'd have to go look. But can they? De- compete with black division and can they compete in their division which i think is site green or whatever they are it's definitely the one that's not blue yeah um, not blue i mean defies is a good team no matter what right De- like you go up against team golden wisp uh and they were incredibly dominant in their regular season uh back in season six um and you gotta you gotta wonder if it's if it's because Team Golden Wisp is just that dominant, or if it's because Defias struggled. Uh, maybe a little bit of both, but Defias has historically been a really solid team, so uh, I don't think there's any reason they can't come back from this. Well, Slimsh would say they'd get your hopes up and let you down, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, moving on. X gave it to them. Yes, they did. X gave it to ATL. With a, uh, I believe the final score was eighteen to seven. Um, what do we think about Zenergy? They had a very dominant win. Um, I know last week we thought the teams were going to be pretty evenly matched, and then Zenergy comes out and really lays it on ATL. So, what do you guys think? Is is Zenergy poised for a playoff run this season? Uh, they must be. Uh... I think they're they're a good team. Um, how many points did they get? They said eighteen points. Eighteen points. Eighteen all points of them. to seven. They got all of yeah. them. Well, they got almost all of them. Oh, oh, sorry. Almost. They got almost all of them. Almost. All yeah. Of them. yeah. Sadly, um, he wasn't in position no, to get the final wasn't. point. And I, I said in position way too much over the last seven days, and uh, <laughs> I was out of it. And my heart's my heart's breaking. Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, it looks like Slime Guy uh, DQ against Dexter in the five seed, uh, and even without that DQ, his energy didn't need the the four free points to take that victory, and that's got to feel really good. Yeah, yeah I bet definitely good. I would I would definitely bet that they felt really prepared for this and their experience in the league. You really to have an 18 point week, you need to be very comfortable with the league and and the rules and your decks and your play and, and, and I bet that they felt very confident in all that and that's wonderful to see. Yeah, um, it, de- it looks like they're they're taking this season very seriously. I know Dexter runs a really, really good team over there and so um, I will, uh, I will, uh, I'll be watching them closely. All right, so uh, we're moving on to the week to come, we got some matchups to take a look at here. Um, the first one, this is the one that I picked, and I picked it for a couple of different reasons. But the first one is Defias and Dirty Mike and the Boys. Um, I picked this one, one, because I like highlighting Dirty Mike and the Boys any chance I get. And two... Both of these teams lost their first week, and um, we both think they're solid teams. So, so who's winning this one? What do you guys think's happening here? 
Um, Dirty Mike and the boys lost to Prep Coin Concede last week. Um, and then, as we just talked about, Defias lost to uh, Team Golden Wisp. So, what do you think about this one? Who's who's getting the redemption in week two? It's definitely got to be Defias. Oh! Dirty Mike, Dirty Mike and the boys are still out cracking open some cold ones. They're, they're just having a fun time. <laughs> Defias... Losing to Team Golden Wisp, but play, playing very well. Uh, I'm sure I didn't watch the games, but but getting a lot of game wins really puts the fire in you to get that next week going. Um, the fire's in my pick. Um, you got to go with Dirty Mike and the boys. I'm honestly a little surprised that you picked Defias. I, I know Defias is solid, but uh, Dirty Mike and the boys made it to the finals last season. And they continue. They performed consistency uh, through the entirety of season six. Um, I mean, they, they did get ten points despite losing. What was the, what was the final score? The final score was ten to fifteen. That's not a huge difference. I mean, it is a, a pretty solid victory for prep point concede. Uh, but Dirty Mike and the boys is uh, is poised to to continue to do well. Yeah. Um... I'm I'm personally gonna pick Dirty Mike and the boys. Interesting to know because uh-huh. they're Dirty DMB's the best. Uh, uh, interesting to note, Defias has brought a bunch of priest, as in all priest, and a bunch of mage. So they've got something cooking up their sleeve this week, and I'm really excited to see how it works out for them. Uh, Tim, give us. I think you picked matchup two. Give us the rundown. Give us what do you think's going on with matchup two here? All right, I picked a matchup two, which is the Bad Hombres versus the Doghouse. Um, you got your former Tavern Talk hosts, uh, Parker and Mange, rolling on the Bad Hombres. Mage is being subbed out this week. Uh, I hear there's some kind of weather going towards Florida. I don't know the details, but he had to find a, he had to find a, a sub. Um, but we got to, we got them going against the Doghouse, which is your team, the Anarchists. I got to yeah. ask how are you feeling going into this week against the Ombres. What do you do? You know what it's like to prepare for Ombre decks. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, uh, we, we did it last week. Lot. It is something. Salmon sent me his deck list. <laughs> Salmon's like, here you go. Here's the deck list I'm playing. I'm like, what? Here, whatever. We're um. We're uh, we're just gonna go at it. Uh, last week, I know Rogue decided to bust out the deck recipes. Oh man! He played deck recipes and won. Hell yeah! Well, you know, it's not necessarily about the tool. Sometimes it's about how you use it. Um, unfortunately, when you're using it compared to someone else who has a good tool and knows how to use it, um, I don't know. I generally tend to favor uh, the doghouse when it comes to that, but uh, I just, I can't take anything away from the bad hombres. I know they're Mimi, uh, but I have faith in them. Well, yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, every time you play against the hombres, you can lose. And no matter, you might go 3-0, and oh, but you are still clenching. You are still, every single game, you are on the edge of your seat, and you are very, very afraid. They can always, always win. If you didn't catch it, go look at MV Parker's Twitch. Um, he did He did stream his match. Um, I'm supposed to play Murdoch tonight at 11. I'm going to stream it. It's I, I haven't even built decks yet. I didn't bring Druid. That's what um, it's like to prepare against the Hombres. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> it really one of the is. Great things about not having prepared decks yet is that Blizzard has prepared this wonderful tool for you. Um, it's Ben Bird was talking about it. Uh, they've they're called deck recipes. <laughs> I know Rogue uses <laughs> them. <laughs> Apparently, they work. Yeah, I mean, you know, they they highlight synergies and class identities <laughs> and, and new mechanics from from newer sets, along with. Some, some basic cards. Players should be able to build them pretty easily. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know when Kahanek's going to be playing Pumbas or, um, I think Rogue and Jim are playing Friday night or something. Um, but yeah, Mange is, uh, 
Mange sadly had to get a sub due to the hurricane, so, uh... You only hear so. Murdoch and Rogue whining. <laughs> uh, I think that had to do with when Kahanic was free and when they got scheduled, so... Yeah, you know, um. I just love to give Mange shit. <laughs> oh... All right. Um, yeah. So tune in tonight at I think eleven on my Twitch. That'll be um, that'll be um, That's where you can see mentioned. me and Murdoch. Me and Murdoch play. Yeah. Sorry, I was reading a message from uh, in Discord. It pertained to the show, so I had to check it. All right. Oh, moving okay. on to uh, matchup number three. Um, we got here Tom Locke. You. You had Tim pick this one for you. What do you think about Philly Hearth versus the Texas Stubbies? This, this is the one that I picked. Excuse you. Uh, <laughs> um, so, no, no, no. Thank you very much, Tim. I am a, I am a big fan of this Philly Hearth team. I think the Philly, the Philadelphia Hearthstone scene is really cool, really diverse. They've got another league out there just in Philly. It's a high roller league. You got to pay 50 bucks just to enter. Um, so they've got a lot of um, a lot of a lot of Hearthstone in Philadelphia. And I'm disappointed to see the two disqualifications. Um, but that'll happen. You know, sometimes you just got to get a cheese steak. Miss classes, miss the uh, Miss a deadline, but uh, the Texas Stubbies, I have seen them uh, in the uh, in the chats on THL, not necessarily Tavern Talk, more of the Salty Saturdays, uh, and they seem like they know how to have fun. They know what they're looking for, and um, this match is still up in the air, so they're still going to have to work together and prepare. Uh, they have three of the matches done already, so they have five people to prepare for two matches. Seems totally, totally doable. You can get a lot done when you have multiple people working on specific goals. So definitely think that the stubbies will, are are heavily favored, but um, it is it is possible for Philadelphia to win, and I think that. If they do prepare, that they stand a good chance to do so. Yeah, um, I think Philly Hearth can only give up one or two games out of their two sets in order to win this week. Um, but if it were me preparing, uh, if I were in that situation, I wouldn't think about that so much. I would try to just get as many points as possible this week. Don't put too much pressure on yourselves. Um, and just see see how you can get as much points, as much morale as you can get going into the next week. Uh, there's still a lot of Hearthstone left to be played. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to note these are two completely freshman teams pretty much uh, facing off. Um, only one player who's even played a single game in Mr. Mandingo subbed out once last season. So this is a brand new team. Um, it's disappointing to see the DQs, but Sir Turtle kind of put them back in it. They still have a chance, but um, it'll be interesting to see how these freshman team, how this freshman team can handle um, sort of that that this early adversity in the season and how they can come back from it. Um, yeah, I also say I'm a big fan of freshman teams. If one of these were a freshman team and the other one was a one one year one season old team, I would definitely be picking. Anything else we want to point out um, during this week of uh, of games? Any any player matchups you've spotted out there that looks interesting to you? Um, before we move on to our Q and A section, throughout the entire week. Yeah, throughout the entire day. Just take a look. Um, I'll bring up one that um, I'm looking forward to, and that is um, hold on. I'm trying to find it here. Um, ADKT and Crackshot. Crackshot has graduated to the four seed. I don't know if he was last week, but maybe that's just because I, I can't pay attention to all the seeds so fast. Um, 
I, I'm trying to check real quick. Yeah, he was the he was he started in the five seed. This is the smoke salmon prodigy himself going up against a a very um. You know, he's an old THL player. He's on Get Off My Lawn for, for crying out loud. So um, I'm really excited to see who pulls off the crack shot ADKT match. It's going to be awesome. Um, the series is already closed. So I'm really excited to see what crack shot can do in, um, in, in the four seed. I'm, I'm really excited to see what comes out of that one there. You guys see anything you like? Yeah, that looks like a cool matchup. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, Lemur subbing in for the Thermic Winds taking on uh, the Pod People Styrus Fair. Uh, those are just two players that I like to see. I've uh, had the pleasure of playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm, a lot of Wicked Wednesdays, um, even hosting Salty Saturdays uh, with Dyrus Fair. And I think I hosted one where Lemur was casting as well. And it's uh, they're great guys. Uh, I want to see how how it ends up when they face off. Tom Locke, you see anything that jumps out to you? Yeah, uh, there is a... Uh, there are two people that uh, are not known memers uh, that have not bought Druid that um, that I think is interesting. Gideon Yura and uh, Jing Buddha on Get Off My Lawn and Thermic Whims. And oh. I think that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, looks like the only class that's been banned so far this week has been Druid, so. Now, there's a Paladin and a Warlock in there. Um, yeah, yeah. It does look like those might not have, like, their opponents might not have had Druid to ban. <laughs> yeah, um, that Warlock <laughs> ban is fake news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Salmon. Salmon didn't ban Druid. Um, he banned Yellow Darts, um. No, I'm sorry. You're, yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah. Okay. Parker's the one that banned a non-existent warlock. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what I was looking at. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Um, another one I, I noticed that I just now s spotted this one. Um, Dirty Mike of Dirty Mike and the Boys, Captain, unofficial Captain of Dirty Mike and the Boys. Is playing against Captain Comp, and I that's gonna be a fun one. They're really close in PR. They're both in the three seed. Um, I I just now noticed that those two are playing each other. Like, clicked in my head, and so that one's gonna be good. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. All right. So moving on to the Q and A section, I've cherry picked some questions here. A um, couple about Druid, of course, and I couple other um, interesting questions um, excuse me uh, let's see Jason Rubenfield also known as JR Juggernaut which classes deck do you think will see more play after the Druid nerf both amongst those already seeing a fair amount of play and amongst those seeing little to no play right now so what do you guys think basically anything gonna spring up out of nowhere and anything gonna take over um, after the nerfs go through? Um, I think the obvious answer is uh, Rizakis Priest, uh, being an already pretty well-known deck. Um, it's got a lot of deck slots that you can you can tech against whatever you're currently seeing. Um, and one of the decks that's been really holding it down is, uh, is Jade Druid. They just, they draw too many cards, they put out way too much pressure, uh, and Rizakis Priest just can't deal with it. Um, but I think once once that deck uh, falls in favor, uh, people are going to be complaining about Rosakin's Priest. Okay, okay. Tom Lock, you got any ideas? Yeah, uh, I think I think you play some Secret Mage. I think uh, they that that deck has um, a, a real struggle against repeated large minions such as Jade. Uh, and especially when those minions are generating lots of value, and uh, I think that it 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 is posed to to do well. Uh, it can it can do well against Bloodlust Shaman things like that. So yeah. I just I, I'm not a meta predictor. Um, I can't I don't know Hearthstone that well. 
uh, I heard some people tell me that they hope mid-range decks come back and I want mid-range hunter to be good again it's basically the same deck it's been for two years but that's what I want to see come back personally um, yeah I think uh, another deck that we uh, that was kind of suppressed by Jade Druid is uh, is that control mage that gunther mage that burn mage whatever you want to call it uh, I like control mage and I think Jade Druid's been suppressing it a lot I'm not 100% sure what other decks um, it performs poorly against, but I'm looking forward to uh, to the return of that deck. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, Bill Grinnan, who, I don't know your THL name because I'm bad at that's what brasky. I do. Brasky. That's Brasky. See, that's, that's, that's why you're here, okay? Everybody drink. I can't keep up on this. <laughs> um... In the same vein as Innervate, which class's biggest problem card, or what is each class's biggest problem card, and how would you change it? So take a minute, think about what um, each class's biggest problem card is. We'll avoid um, Warrior and Druid since those two just got a hit. Um, but do you see any problem cards out there you would change? Um, we kind of already talked about Ice Block, so we'll avoid that one. Um, Tim, anything jump to your mind? Um, in terms of problem cards, um, we already discussed Fiery War Axe. I think that would be my, my go-to answer for that. But turns out that's getting hit as well. Um, I'm not too sure. I, I can't really think of any cards that I hate so much right now that, uh, that didn't get hit by these nerves. I can, I, I gotta go with Ice Block. I know that it's, they they haven't nerfed it yet, but they are going to. But I do think that it's a problematic card because it limits design space, blah, blah, blah. That's how I would define problematic, is limiting, um, limiting play and, and design space. Um, uh, the other thing, Stonehill Defender is not really a class card, but I think it limits a lot of design space. That might be good. Um, limiting the it limits a way that it does that having that such a strong neutral mid-range card like that makes it so that they don't have to print strong or they don't have to make sorry they don't have to make strong mid-range defensive cards for every class so uh, that can be problematic or not problematic your yeah. view of it um, I'm not a big fan of Primordial Glyph. Um, the, the discount on it is just ridiculous. Um, that card's bothering me. I want to tilt Parker, so I'm going to throw out Prep. <laughs> Innervate got nerfed. Why is Prep still at three mana? Come on, Blizzard. Parker. I know, <laughs> I know that's going to tilt you. Um... I'm thinking about other classes, and there's nothing that crazy sticks out to me. Um, you know, Warlocks is its hero power. Paladin, Paladin does run a lot of the same stuff. Like it seems like for a long time, we've seen a lot of Tyrion, a lot of Equality Consecrate or Equality Pyro, um, Agro Druid, um, or Agro Paladin always plays a lot of uh, Divine Favor. And that card's terrible to play against, but it's it's not very popular right now. Um, Shit, I changed ahead. my answer. What's um, your answer? <laughs> all of the basic cards. <laughs> all of the basic cards. Um, the yeah, I mean, like the more the more I, I talk to Tom Locke here, it's like we play against a lot of the same cards and a lot of the same combos. Um, we and we have been for a long time, so I I can see why. Um, you would want a permanent like standard rotation, but they they need to print more cards for that to happen. And they also, yeah, I yeah. think, they need to to find a way to um, do reprints without without it feeling bad to people. Um, like I don't want to see Fireball go away forever, but um, I'd like to take a break from it. You know, um, there are um, Magic had a, a core set, very powerful. They had four sets, but they also do huh? reprints of all the yeah. uh, older cards in their expansions. 
but they had um, they had very 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 fan favorite cards that had been around for 10 years go away for like seven years and then randomly brought them back and it made people really excited yeah. don't expect Hearthstone to you know follow that length of a timeline but mm -hmm. say you take something away for two or three years be only pretty pretty excited to see it back something like Fireball I don't think they should I don't think Fireball is a problematic card. I love. I actually think it really helps define Mage. Mm -hmm. um, but all of the things that I don't like about the the basics that I also are also sometimes the things I do like um, when when they're pulled off well. And I think Fireball is an example of pulling it off well. However, if they did take that away for two years and then brought it back, you can imagine how freaking pumped Mage players would be. Yeah, um, it, it'd be a really cool experience. Now, there's definitely times where we forget that a lot of those basic cards really do fill a mage vibe or a paladin vibe or a hunter. Like, they make the class feel unique. Um, so they do have a very difficult job of balancing those those two things. Um, between the Hall of Fame and balance changes, uh, I'm not sure it's, it's um, being done as perfect as it could be done now, but they could definitely be doing it worse. We could still be in just wild right now. Um, yeah. So we'll give them a little credit. Um, that, does rem that does remind me that uh, of a card that I do think is problematic in another class, which uh, is weirdly um, scavenging hyena. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Hunter, I think it's problematic because it it uh, encourages a really uh, unrewarding and unsatisfying type of gameplay, which is shove everything into one minion, um, which is and, and and it's that's not it doesn't really feel very Hunter to me. Like I've got all these super cool beasts and they're my friends and I'm making them bigger. And they're by my side. And, <laughs> and then we play and a then hyena. Yeah, and then we play, <laughs> we play a hyena that eats them. You know, that's, um, that's, that, you know, um, that's, that's a warlock thing. Kill all my minions and make a big one. You know, the, there's, uh, I think it's Boyd Tear. Sacrifice the two minions next to this. Yeah. Add their power and attack. Or their attack and, and their defense. Um, I think think that card's a freaking awesome card it's a really really defines the warlock class well uh and sees some play occasionally i think but, hunter hunter just to me just feels like it's been in a really bad spot for a while um very few interesting um interesting decks that you've been able to build with hunter like um and none of them have been particularly good or feel rewarding to play to me um some people like geog and load hunter secret hunter was just dump your secrets and hope you can equip a you know a bow a turn or two later and get some value off that but i don't know i just hunter as a whole has just felt really pigeonholed and just not fun lately um and that was my favorite class when i started i think if stitch tracker becomes good then hunter will be fun uh, yeah, I cool card. I've been playing some Stitch Tracker and Popper, and boy, is it fun. Uh, I was not a person that had a lot of fun with Hunter when Hunter was good. I was, I was not against Hunter being good at the time, um, or anything like that. I just didn't play it. Um, but I, if Stitch Tracker is good, Hunter will be fun to play um, for for people like me. I think. Moving on, we have uh, Mark Hold the Door Porto, aka Darkseed. I think that's Darkseed, I can't remember. Yeah, that's <laughs> There's another Mark that I mix up, but I'm fairly certain that's Darkseed. Um, he basically said, he, he's basically he's saying counterfeit coin is, uh, or Innervate is counterfeit coin now. Um, would you guys have handled Innervate different to. Um, to, for balance and to preserve class identity. Um, so just give me a suggestion. Like, I think, I, like I said, I'm, I'm of the vein. Restore two mana crystals that you've been spent. Um, what do you, would you guys have changed it differently? What would you all have done if you were in Ben Broad's shoes um, to try and keep the class identity and, and balance the card? Yeah, um, 
think we pretty much covered this. Uh, I'll answer for both Tom Locke and myself. I was, I'm of the mind to uh, refresh it, and uh, mm. Tom Locke likes it the way it is now, or uh, or just take it out of the game. Did I, did I pretty much cover your answer there? <laughs> All right, and our last question, and this is one from our president, Ben Goodman, a.k.a. Ridiculous Hat. What's your opinion on post-match etiquette, both from a winner's or a loser's perspective? Is it poor form to to immediately unfriend from either side? Uh, and this is a really interesting question because this is something like there's not any – nowhere we be able to find um, like a – post-match etiquette guide or anything like that on the website. It's kind of just happens. Um, so what do you guys do? What do you think? Um, is it poor form? What do you do? Um, uh, anything like that? Um, what do you think, Tim? Um, so I've personally played a lot of online uh, Hearthstone tournaments. Uh, and sometimes you just, after you're, when you're losing... Your, your match is done, you just remove them. You don't have anything else to say to the person. Um, I can see that a lot in THL as well. Yeah. Sometimes you're just, you're just not friends, you're not interested in, in talking to the person that you just played, if win or lose, uh, so you just remove them immediately. Um, I personally feel a, a little bit of a bigger connection to the community, so I like to keep people on my friends list after I play them, maybe have a small discussion about their decks or their strategies, if they're willing to share uh, after the match, um, to try to build that sense of, uh, of a community within THL that's uh, so unique to us that uh, you don't really see uh, in the other Hearthstone communities. I have very strong feelings about this, and Who do you I, got? I do not know if people are going to like them. Uh, so, my super strong feelings are that uh, tilting and so uh, I used to be a Magic the Gathering player, played very competitively, traveled, played on the Pro Tour, blah blah blah. And in Magic the Gathering, there the loser always says, "Good games, well played," and there's a handshake, and that was one of the best, best things. Uh, about magic um hearthstone's great because your opponent can't talk to you but <laughs> no um but yes if there were a way to handshake in hearthstone it would be ob obligatory absolutely and uh, i always try uh when i lose to say well played or a good game or something like that um hearthstone kind of has a um after match meta game of the winner saying well played good game uh which took me a long time to get used to it it made me very very mad at first um but that's just be that's the cultural norm and i think that um anything we can do to be more friendly even if the gestures are empty and false 99% of the time um, that 1% of the time it'll make somebody feel better about a loss or it'll make them feel more welcome it's just inexcusable to not put the effort in for your community uh, it would be it's like you know submitting all your decks playing your matches and then just not playing the fifth game you know that that'd be very disrespectful to your opponent um, and and th that's how I feel about saying something at the end of the match as well, um, something positive. Um, if you need, if you feel, uh, some people do have really strong emotional reactions to losing, and that's okay. Um, if you feel like you can't uh, chat with your opponent after the match, it is okay to say, GG. Don't wait for them to respond to you sign off, unfriend them, and then send an email that says uh, well played or well constructed or something just later once you've cooled down. And that really, really will make our community better and you will feel yourself, you'll feel better about all of your losses because you're like, wow, I am doing a little bit to make the community better.
Yeah, yeah and to kind of add on to what he was saying a little bit, um, you have the opportunity to uh, to learn from your opponent. Maybe they say, maybe they saw something uh, that you could have done. Um, the opportunity to learn is there. Um, I, I mean, we all know Hearthstone is in the game uh, fully enveloped in skill, and there's a lot of luck involved. Um, and sometimes you, you take a look at your game and say, ah, oh, that was all luck, I did everything, there was nothing I could have done differently. Um, but use your opponent as a resource. Maybe they saw something you could have you could have done that you didn't see. That is a very, very big deal. Um, pretending that you might have done something wrong will make you a better player. Uh, much like pretending to care about your opponent. Because you eventually will care about your opponent and you eventually will um, realize that you do occasionally make mistakes. Uh, there are like three people in Hearthstone that I think are good players, and uh, they still make mistakes occasionally. So, yeah, there, there, there's definitely some uh, some truth that you can learn from uh, your opponents, but a lot of times you're not really in a state of mind to want to learn from your opponents yeah. uh, two two seconds after your loss. So. Um, I have unfriended some people the second my match is over because I was tilted really hard and I knew if I started talking to him I'd probably say something get me into trouble so I'm just like I'm just going away for a little bit um, so, so it's totally okay it's totally okay to so, unfriend it is okay to unfriend without saying a GG but if you do do that, please send them an email or something later on. Um, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that is a good thing. Like, there's been times where I've lost, and after the match, I just want to talk to my opponent um, about how crazy of a match that was. Like, I always go back to this match I had with Arcturus in SHL last season where, like, it was back and forth the whole way, and then I lost two 50-50s at the end, and I lost, and it was a top warrior mirror, and it was, it was a great series, and we had fun talking about it afterwards. Um, and there's been other times like that, and then there's other bit. There's been other times where I can't get a win with Agro Shaman when Agro Shaman's just nuts, and Jim Phillips beats me. And I'm like, those were good games, but I'm not, I'm really mad right now. <laughs> and so like this was when he was on my SHL team, so I had to like grip my teeth and be like, man, you played really good. I'm really mad. I couldn't get a win with Agro Shaman. Um, and then I will add. Another important piece to this, um, if you don't talk to your opponent at all, like before the game or anything, like you just do all the, you just do the asset, the screenshot, and you don't say hi or anything, um, don't do that. You should say hi to your opponent. Uh, but if if your opponent just seems like the kind of person doesn't want to talk to you, it's okay to, to read the signals. Like, the, like when you go to the bar, and the woman's sitting there alone, and then you sit there, and she turns away from you right away. Like, it's okay to read the signals. <laughs> so, uh, adding on to sort of post-match post etiquette, um, how do you all feel about people who want to talk to you during the match or in between the matches? Does, does that bother you guys? Um, I usually don't care if I'm winning, but if I'm losing, I'm usually a bit more sensitive to it. So uh, I hate it. Uh, most of, I mean, <laughs> okay. ninety-five percent of the time, um, at least in my experience, my opponent's been trying to to tilt me or distract me. Um, I don't get any like benevolent intent intent from them. There have been a couple cases where it's just you know me and me and a friend uh, in THL playing, and we'll chat back and forth. Um, but a lot of time. Uh, in, at least in tournament settings, when people are trying to talk to me, they're like, "Oh, what the hell was that? Oh, that play was BS." And you're just like, hey, "This, this isn't the kind of things you want to be talking about during the game to your opponent. Like, focus on your own plays. We can discuss it after." Yep. Uh, they're back uh, in. So in Magic, obviously, you can't control if your opponent's talking to you. And there was this guy I was playing against at the uh, high levels of a tournament. And he just, every time that he played anything, he delivered a one-liner about that guy. <laughs> Anytime I played anything, he delivered a separate one-liner. So you and were playing, uh, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime in Magic. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, that made my day. And uh, he didn't annoy me at all. 
So yeah, no, I don't talk during a match. I mean, um, I always post in the chat who won each game, just for clarity's purposes, but um, it, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I usually don't, usually if I'm winning, it's, I'm usually not going to be that salty. The most, I, I've never had anyone like really try and like communicate with me a bunch in the middle of a match, but like, um, sometimes in between matches, someone will say like, oh, holy crap, that twisting other was just insane, or, you know, that, that turn was just crazy. And I usually don't care too much about that, but I think as a general rule, being silent mid-match is, um. Yeah, a I pretty mean, good, can, a pretty safe rule to go with. You can read the signals. Like it's not, it's not hard to know when someone's angry or like not receptive. I, it might be actually, it might be hard. I'm sorry if uh, if that is hard for you. Uh, it it is possible to do that though. Uh, answering Blue Sombrero's question, do you think it's bad to, uh, do you think it's BM to emote well played? Uh, I used to, but that really is the cultural norm. If you win a game, you you. It's just super, super common to say well played. Uh, so no, I don't. I don't think that's bad manners. No, yeah. totally fine. The, um, it it just depends. You know, I think most of the time, if you're using the emotes, just have have a good have faith that it's it's it is a well played. Um, yeah. I will and usually well played. Um, I usually well played after I've like shown lethal. I won't. I try to at least, but sometimes yeah. I just go well played and smack him in the face or something um, when it's pretty obvious. And then a lot of times when my opponent passes turn on a turn they know they're going to lose, I'll get a well played from them. Um, so, But as yeah. long as you're not um, sitting there spamming emotes, I think, you know, it's fine. Yeah, and, and it is never, ever bad manners to mute somebody's emotes. Oh, yeah. Just... Do a lot of times I'll do that. I uh, I really 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 want Hearthstone Deck Tracker to introduce that as a feature, the auto mute emotes. But you know, what can you do? All right, uh, we're about to wrap up here. Brunson sixty nine in chat. He wants us to answer his question. Which statement describes you best? A. I use Colgate toothpaste. Or B. I have an IQ of forty. <laughs> Those are your I'm options. I'm pretty sure I use Colgate. Yeah, yeah. I would say the most correct answer is that I use Colgate. Um, I answered this question just for him. Right as Brunson bounces out of chat because he's seen too many XDs. <laughs> um, is that what happens when you play against his energy? <laughs> All right. Any parting thoughts? Uh, parting lot thoughts. Tom Lock. Oh wait, I almost forgot because I didn't put it on my list. I got plugs. We gotta we gotta tell everyone to go watch our other content. Friday Night Fights is tomorrow. I didn't figure out who was gonna be on it, but I'm sure it's gonna be good. So go watch it. Um, that's tomorrow. Salty Saturday. Um, also don't know who's gonna be on it. But I'm sure it's good matches. Go watch it. Um, Sunday, I think we're getting the SHL show live. I, I think I got a, I think there's been some emails yeah. sent out for that. I got um, an invitation to play on that, so I'm thinking they're, I think they're going yeah. for it. I won't be playing on it personally, but uh, definitely expect it. Yeah, I'm playing in the afternoon that day. So um, Brunson says it sounds like Colgate was the correct answer because he says using Crest should be punishable by death. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go check my toothpaste, and if it's crest, I gotta throw it out. Oh, who knows? I don't, who cares? <laughs> Apparently, Brunson. But uh, and then tune in. Um, uh, I think it's moving to t Thursday or to Tuesdays now. But, but the power ranking show, um, they just had their second week. They'll be back next week, and I'm fairly certain they're moving to Tuesday. So turn into the tune into that. Um, yeah. Um, now we can do parting thoughts. Tim, go. Parting thoughts. It's exciting to be on Tavern Talk instead of watching it. <laughs> but the best thing is being on Tavern Talk and watching Tavern Talk at the same time. Tavern Talkception. Tom Locke, what do you, uh, what do you got for us? Parting thoughts. Uh, ban all the basic cards. Um, and, uh, <laughs> be nice to people. Yeah. Be not, th those are things I can get behind. 
Um, I'm going to say play Pirates while you still can. Um, and, yeah, that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.